Hi, everybody. Like Peter said, my name is Kelsey. And um, just like Emma, I'm a graduate student at University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Um, so I'm studying biology there. And specifically, I'm studying um, a branch of biology called genetics. And so I spend a lot of time thinking about genes and how those genes can play a role in diseases that people have. Um, and eventually, my goal is I would like to study them uh, well enough so that I could come up with maybe some ideas to treat genetic diseases. Um, so before I got started with today's presentation, I was going to give all of you some Halloween candy. But now that I look at my bucket of Halloween candy, it's all just empty wrappers. So it seems like someone must have already eaten this candy. This is a problem. And I think I have an inkling that it might actually be someone in this room who ate the candy. So since what I know is genes and studying DNA, that's what we are going to work on today. So we are going to use DNA to figure out who ate this candy. And I'm going to teach all of you a little bit about DNA so you guys can help me solve this mystery. Because this really is a problem. All of the candy is gone. So to start out, since we're talking about DNA, I thought we should know what DNA actually stands for. It's just three letters. It's a short abbreviation. And it stands for a much longer chemical name that is deoxyribonucleic acid. So this is kind of a mouthful, which is why we're just going to call it DNA as I'm going throughout this talk to teach you guys about it. And one of the most important things to know about DNA, especially if we're going to use it to solve this mystery, is where is this DNA found? Where can we find it? And then how can we use it to solve this mystery? So DNA is found in all of your cells. And your whole body is made up of cells. There's trillions of cells in your body. And this is an example of what a cell looks like. And there's actually a special region of the cell where the DNA is found. And that's right here. This is part of the cell that's called the nucleus. And all of your DNA, and so all of this information, is all stored in this part of the cell called a nucleus. So um, another thing that we want to know about DNA so that we can work on fixing this problem is what does DNA look like? And so this is a really, really zoomed in picture to DNA. Even if you were using a microscope, you wouldn't be able to see this. But if you could get really up close to the DNA and see what it looks like, it would look like this. And so it has this twisty structure. And that twisty structure is known as a double helix. And then um, in the middle, you can see all of these letters here. There's an A and a T and a G and a C. And all of these are abbreviations for even more chemical names. So DNA is an abbreviation for deoxyribonucleic acid. And then each of these letters is an abbreviation for another chemical. And all of these chemicals come together to make up the entire molecule of DNA. So why is DNA even important, and how are we using it in, to solve this mystery? DNA is what makes you, you. So it's just like in this game of Guess Who, you have all of these different people on there. And so all of these people would have a little bit of different DNA. And it's just like all of you. Everyone has a different hair color or a different eye color, and everyone has different heights. And the reason that that's the case is everyone has a little bit of different DNA, and so it's making you who you are. How, how is it that DNA does this? So this is just a picture of DNA. This would be a whole strand of DNA. And there are certain segments of this DNA strand that are called genes. And so in this picture, there is a picture of two different genes. And one part of the DNA is gene 1. And then there's a little bit of space in between. And then you move over a little farther, and you have gene two. And there's lots and lots of different genes that are in 
our entire DNA. And this is, this is just a picture of a small portion of that. Um, so you have this whole piece of DNA, and then genes are in different segments of that. And then genes play a very important role in actually how our cells are functioning. So um, how they do that is that genes contain instructions to make proteins. And so I'm going to go through and tell you a little bit about how they do that. And this is actually really similar to cooking. So if any of you like cooking at all, baking cookies, anything like that, it's a really similar kind of process. So if you think about a cookbook, that's where you're going to find the recipe. That's where the instructions are to make the food that you eventually want to eat. So the recipes are being stored in this cookbook. And this is the same thing about how the instructions to make up you are stored in your DNA. Something that you might do when you're trying to make food from the cookbook is you might go through this whole book and you'll pick just the one recipe that you're interested in. And then you might make a paper copy of that. So instead of having to carry around this whole big book, now you just have one piece of paper. That's a lot easier to move around. You don't have to worry about all of the other information that you're not interested in. And the same kind of thing happens with your DNA. DNA is one chemical, but in order for it to actually function, it has to be made into a copy of a different chemical called RNA. So it's very similar. It's just a little bit different chemically, but it's the same idea as making a paper copy from the cookbook. Once you have this RNA, it's easier to move it within the cell and get it to where it needs to be. And then the final step after you've made your paper copy of your recipe is to actually get together all of your ingredients and make the food. And this is the same thing that's going on in your cells. It needs to get all of the chemicals that it needs and then it will make proteins. And proteins are what are actually functioning in your cells. Protein is what's needed to have everything go on inside of your body. And another thing here is that when you make food, you can put all different kinds of food together and you'll bring those all together to make your meal. And the same kind of thing happens with the proteins. You'll have to get all different kinds of proteins together so that they can work together and then you can walk around as a functional human being. All right, so I have a little bit of trivia for you guys so you can shout out whatever answer you think is correct. I'm gonna have choices come up in a second. So how many bases do you think there are in the human genome? And here's some choices. There's 3,000, 300,000, 3 million, 3 billion, and 3 trillion. Any guesses? I hear three trillion. Any other ones? Three trillion. Three trillion? It's three billion, which is still a really big number. Three trillion is a really, really big number, and three billion is still a big number. So if we write it out, it looks like this. And this is all those A's, G's, and T's, and C's that we saw. There's lots and lots of them. There's three billion. And so before we were talking about how people are all different, we all have different hair color, different eye color. So um, since we're not all exactly the same, what percent of our DNA do we think is similar to anybody else that might be in this room? I've got choices for this one too. So there could be 99.9%, .9%, so this is really similar. There's only a little bit of differences here. Or 98%, 90, 60, or 10. Any guesses here? You think 60? I've got a 60. Anything else? Hearing lots of 60. Oh, and a 98. All right, let's see. One billion. One billion percent. That's really similar. <laughs> let's see. So it's 99.9 percent. .9%. So this seems like we're all very different. If we look around the room, we all seem like very different people. Um, but we actually have a lot, a lot of similarities in our DNA. But we have to keep in mind how much DNA we have and this still means, even though we're 99.9% .9 similar, there's three million bases that are different. And so now, in order to figure out who it was in this room who ate the candy, we're gonna have to focus on only these parts of the DNA that are different. Because the parts that are the same, that won't help us out at all. That would say that it could be any one of us. 
And so you can kind of think of this as a DNA fingerprint. Our fingerprints are all different. We all have different fingerprints because all of the different little lines, you can, if you look at your finger right now, you can see them. All of those different little lines, they're different for all of us. And so it's this same kind of thing we can do looking at DNA. There'll be different parts of the DNA that are different between all of us. So what are some sources of DNA? I said that DNA is found in our cells. So where do we think we maybe could find some DNA so that we can find out who ate the candy? These are um, some of the different places that we might get DNA from. Um, you can have it from sweat and blood and, and hair, like I said. But the one that we're going to focus on right now is you can get some DNA from saliva and from the cells that are right on the inside of your mouth. Okay, so to do our test and find out who ate this candy, I'm going to need all of you to get some saliva into your test tube. And for step two, I'm going to add just a little bit of soap to your tube, and then you guys are going to have to mix it up really well. All right, so as you guys are shaking up your soap mixture, what this soap is doing is, um, so if you think about soap in, when you're washing dirty dishes, you have all of the grease that's on there and you want to break apart that grease so that your dishes will be clean. This is kind of doing a, sa a similar thing to your collection of cells and the saliva that's in the tube and that it's opening up the cell membranes and everything that's contained within those cells can come out into the mixture. And so this has DNA, this has RNA, this has some sugars, this has some proteins. And we just, we want it to all come out into the mixture so that we'll be able to examine it in a little bit. And so the next thing we have to do is add some salt. And I'm actually going to talk about magnets a little bit now too. So this is kind of a review of what Emma was just talking about earlier. So um, when you guys had your magnets, you could probably tell that if you have two south poles coming together, they're going to push apart from each other. And this, you can think about this, is similar to what's going on with the DNA. So your DNA is negatively charged. You can have something that's negatively charged and something that's positively charged. And DNA is negatively charged, so normally it's also, it's all pushing away from each other. It's trying to get away from other DNA that's in the solution. What's happening when you guys put your salt into this mixture is that you're adding a positive charge in between all of the negatively charged DNA. And so what this does is it's going to bring the DNA back closer together. Uh, and the reason that we need your DNA to all come together in the solution is so that we can see it. If all the DNA stays all spread out, we're not ever going to be able to see that. But this is going to bring it closer together so you can actually see what it looks like. The last step before we actually get to see our DNA, which is really exciting, um, we're going to need to add some isopropanol to your mixture. And I'm going to come around with that. And what the isopropanol is going to do um, is so your DNA really likes water and so when it's in water you're not going to be able to see it but DNA does not like isopropanol so once I put this in it's going to try and get away from the isopropanol and then we'll be able to see it and so once you start shaking this you should see some white stringy material like this and that is the DNA that's from your cell all right so now We've all been able to see our DNA, but we still haven't figured out who ate this candy. So I, now I'm gonna, we're going to have to go through and analyze this DNA that we've collected. And so how is this possible? If you look in there, you can probably see a little bit. You can see a little bit of white stringy DNA in there, but that doesn't seem like very much. Exactly, that is what we need to find out. So there's only a really small amount of material in there. 
And this is actually going to be able to give us a lot of information. And this uses a kind of reaction called polymerase chain reaction. And what this does is it'll just take this small amount of DNA that we have and make lots and lots of copies of that DNA. So this is going to be able to give us more information. And you can think about this, since it's called polymerase, it has the prefix poly, which this is just, this is just like a polygon. So a polygon is a shape that has lots and lots of sides, and this is called polymerase chain reaction, so that we're going to have lots and lots of DNA to give us more information. So after we have all of these copies of DNA, we have to do something to actually see what's different between different people. Yeah. How we can find out who ate the candy. So this is, this is just an example. This is not from anyone's DNA in here. So this is just showing a sample of three people's different DNA, okay? When we look at it right now, can we tell that there's anything different? No, we can't. Right now, this just looks the same. So we need to use a protein that's going to go and look at this DNA for us and tell us where the differences are. So there's some proteins that recognize specific letters. We talked about the A, G, T, C. There are some special proteins that recognize these and will tell us where they are. So this is just for an example, but I'm going to pretend that these are the letters that we're looking for. And so in this first person, we're going to use this protein and it's going to go in and it found that this, these letters were found at these two spots. And what it does when it finds these letters at spots, it cuts the DNA right there. So now this first person's DNA, we have into three different size pieces. And when we do the same thing to this piece of DNA, there's also two, two cuts, but now they're different sizes. And so here you can tell these two people have different DNA and they're different sizes. And with the last person, it, there, it only finds these letters at one spot. So now you can see that there's these pieces of DNA that are at all different sizes. So now we're getting at how we can figure out who ate this candy. In order to see these different sizes, you have to take the DNA and run it through something called a gel. And this gel is very similar to jello. You can think about it, you have this block of jello and it's got some holes in it and you can put the DNA into the holes at the top and then you have to move the DNA through this gel. And how it works is if you have one of the really big pieces of DNA, it can't move through very quickly. You can think about this like if you're getting through a really crowded hallway, if there's a full adult trying to walk through, they can't squeeze through all the little spaces but when there's a child walking through the same hallway, they're a lot smaller and so they can move through a lot faster. And so you end up having these really big pieces of DNA up here at the top and then the little small pieces of DNA all move to the bottom. And this is different for each of the different people. And so um, this is how we would figure out who ate this candy. Um, would be by looking at this DNA and um, matching up the DNA from your guys' samples and then the DNA that we found on all of these candy wrappers. So before, before we actually find out who ate this candy, I'm just going to give a quick summary of the things we talked about so that we all are on the same page about what we know about DNA and then we will find out finally who ate the candy. So we talked about how DNA is found in the nucleus of your cells. It's just a special part of your cell. And that it has a double helix structure. So this is that twisty structure that we saw in a couple of pictures. And DNA contains instructions to make proteins. So this is just like the cookbook. Uh, humans have a lot of the same DNA, but there's just a couple of differences. And that's what's important for figuring out who ate this candy. Um, which, yes, these areas of variability are important for that. And all of us all have different, unique DNA fingerprints. And so that is how we know um, who ate the candy. All right. So it's the moment of truth. We are about to reveal 
who ate the candy. So I secretly analyzed all of your guys' samples. I know you're dying to hear this. And I found out it was Anna and Sylvia ate all of the candy.